A slicer is one of the key components of 3D printing. It takes on the crucial role of taking a 3D model and chopping it up into layers or G-code, which is the set of instructions that the 3D printer understands and needs to print out your model. It's so important that even if you have a completely dialed in top of the line printer, your prints will not look good or they will fail if you do not have adequate settings set in the slicer. A few months ago, I ran a poll asking what slicer everyone was using for their daily driver. There were 3,000 votes and the majority was overwhelmingly Cura with 65% followed by Prusa Slicer. In today's video, I want to talk about my experience using various slicers over the years. We will go through the more popular slicers to touch on some of their highlights and overall workflow, and I will do my absolute best to sort of summarize them based on my time or my experience with them. The primary goal is to help you decide on which slicer might be the best for you, and maybe even convince you to try a different slicer. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. I bought my first 3D printer in 2014, which was the DaVinci 1.0 by XYZ Printing. Prior to that, I had never been exposed or had any experience with using either a 3D printer or any form of slicing software. The DaVinci 1.0 was a lockdown machine and required the use of XYZware, which was the slicer for it. Since I hadn't used any other slicers, I did not realize just how buggy, slow, and really limited in features it was until much later on. The DaVinci 1.0 lasted for a couple of initial prints and then had a pretty serious hardware failure. After many months of having a paperweight in my room, I ended up gutting the original controller and swapping it out for a Ramps and Arduino board running Repetier firmware. And because of my sort of limited experience into 3D printing at that point, I assumed that because it had a Repetier firmware on the board, that I also had to use Repetier Slicer. So that is what I learned and what I used for probably the next two or three years. Coming from XYZWare, Repetier or Repetier had a bunch of different options, additional options, as well as it gave me much more control of my 3D printer. And when slicing, you had the option to use either Cura Engine or the Slicer, which is spelled like Slick 3R Engine. And I overall really enjoyed my time using the Repetier Host Slicer. As years went on and I started to meet more and more people in the 3D printing hobby technology space, I often would get people asking me the question of why I was using Repetier Host and my typical answer was that it was just what I know and it seems to work well for me. Then sometime around 2018, someone introduced me to Cura and at first I was incredibly hesitant because the whole workflow and interface looked nothing like what I was used to, but after playing around with it and actually giving it a chance, I was hooked and fully switched. Cura is and really was the only slicer I used unless I was forced to use another slicer from 2018 to probably early 2021. Cura is an open source slicer that has been around for as long as I have been 3D printing. One huge convenience of Cura is that they have an insane amount of printer profiles baked in for nearly any major machine you can think of. This is fantastic for beginners and makes it very easy to get up and running very quickly. The UI is also very clean, featuring one long window with different sections for various slicing options. Cura has a massive amount of advanced features that you can choose from, but by default, many of them are hidden. For someone starting out, there are plenty of features already, and for more advanced users, you can quickly make the extra settings visible. I do really like this approach because I feel like Cura does a fantastic job of not overwhelming someone that's new to 3D printing that's already learning so much by throwing just all of these different settings and features and words at someone that they don't mean anything to that person at that point. Cura has a third-party plugin marketplace in the slicer, which has helped to add some pretty great features for things like calibration as well as adhesion. I also really like the tree supports that Cura has. Tree supports we covered in a previous video, which I'll have linked, but they're sort of these organic looking structures that help to minimize waste on support structures, and they allow you to get to really difficult to reach places by sort of creating like a vine, which I think is probably where the name tree came from. Cura did just release version 5.0, which has a completely new slicing engine featuring variable line width, which seems very powerful. It was also just announced in the last couple of weeks that Cura and MakerBot have merged. Although it doesn't seem like at this point it's going to have any major effects on Cura, it does give me a slight bit of concern as to what the future might have in store for Cura. Regardless, Cura is a great slicer, and if you haven't already, I highly recommend taking a look at it. Early last year, I picked up a Mac that uses the M1 chip and it did not play nicely with Cura. Slicing was incredibly slow and the preview window either took forever to load or would freeze up entirely. Cura did state that with the 5.0 release, it's more optimized for the M1 chip, which I have not tried out yet, but it is because of that that last year I began to transition over to Prusa Slicer. 
Prusa Slicer is also an open source slicer that is developed in-house by Prusa's team that is based on the old Slicer or Slick 3R. It's because of this that it reminds me much more of my time using the Repetier Host Slicer. Prusa Slicer is very different than Cura, which some may love while others may find overwhelming. Instead of having a long list of slicer parameters, there are pages or tabs on the top and side, which is how you navigate through the various settings. There is a simple advanced and expert mode, which will hide certain features, but it does not give you the same level of exact control that Cura does as far as hiding features. Speed-wise, the slicer has been an absolute treat. It works fantastic with the M1 and the slicing side of things, as well as the preview have been very, very snappy. There are a ton of great features and Prusa's team is constantly updating it with features that I absolutely love. Some of my favorites are paint on supports, snug supports, multi-material painting, and the really powerful per object settings. They have been adding third party machine profiles into the slicer, which is great to see, but Cura has been doing this for much longer, so the library is not nearly as large. Just like Cura, Prusa Slicer has a massive community and it's absolutely worth checking out. Next up, we have Super Slicer, which I had not really heard of until last year when I dove into the wonderful world of Voron. Super Slicer is a fork of Prusa Slicer, and as such, looks near identical with some subtle changes. Super Slicer being a fork of Prusa Slicer ends up adding all of the Prusa Slicer features to it. This does take some time each release though, so if you do want to test out the latest Prusa Slicer features, you will want to run Prusa Slicer or you might be waiting. Super Slicer has so many settings that you can configure, it's absolutely insane. If you are someone that wants to have fine tooth control of each and every part of your slice, then Super Slicer would absolutely be my recommendation. It is also the reason that I don't really recommend it for beginners. It does have the same simple advanced and expert mode, but I personally think you'd be much better off starting with Prusa Slicer before transitioning to Super Slicer. Due to their near identical layout, if you do decide you want to transition over to Super Slicer later on, it should be a very simple process. Prusa Slicer does have the majority of what I want, but there have been a few times that Prusa Slicer will not let me combine certain sets of parameters that Super Slicer will allow. It also has the option to choose Clipper for your G-Code flavor. I've been playing around with Super Slicer much more with my Voron Switchwire, and I've really been enjoying it. Another slicer that you may want to look into is Idea Maker from Raise 3 d It is the only slicer on this list that is not open source, but it has had a ton of development over the years, and there are quite a few people that have reached out to me that absolutely swear by it. In my early days of 3D printing, there was a very popular paid slicer called Simplify 3D. Simplify 3D has not had an update since 2018, and because of that, many of the free open source slicers have far surpassed it in its feature set, and so most have transitioned over to a different slicer at this point. Some of those ex Simplify 3D users have told me that Idea Maker has sort of a similar interface and workflow, and they really like that about Idea Maker. Idea Maker added a library system that allows the community to easily create and share profiles for printers and materials, which is pretty unique. I don't have a ton of experience with Idea Maker, but I have played around with it a bit over the past couple of months with the SaneSmart Infi 20, which is the SaneSmart belt printer. It has some pretty nice features built in that make it my preferred slicer so far, at least for using with a belt printer. This is also a slicer that's absolutely worth taking a look at to see if you sort of like the workflow as well as the features that it has. After playing around with all the slicers on this list, as well as many other sort of proprietary or manufacturer specific slicers over the years, I'm convinced that there is not one best slicer. Just like 3D printing, that's not a one shoe fits all, slicers are the exact same way, and a lot of what is best for you is going to come down to personal preference. Slicers have evolved a ton over the years and they are very, very capable. Just about any slicer that exists now will have more than enough features for your sort of standard day-to-day -day 3D printing. If you are new to 3D printing, I think it's really important to find a slicer that has a built-in profile for your specific machine. The reason for this is that so many issues can arise from having to create a profile when you haven't really done any 3D printing or you don't exactly know what all of the settings mean. And there are just so many other things to learn that you'll have plenty of time to sort of tweak those settings later on or build your own profile. But starting off with the manufacturer defaults that someone that they know or someone has tested and knows works well with your machine is absolutely the place that I would recommend starting. Personally, I think that you should master one slicer, but you should also gain familiarity with at least one other slicer because sometimes slicers will do very weird things. One example may be just a weird geometry that's not playing nicely or you don't like the way the layers are slicing, or another example is a few months ago, I shared that there was a model that I sliced up in Prusa Slicer that for some reason just kept failing. It was printing very, very weird. 
And it turns out that when I sliced it in Prusa Slicer, it was removing one entire layer. So it was basically printing a layer, skipping the next layer, and then printing again. And I thought it was hardware related. And if I had not imported it into Idea Maker or a different slicer to take a look at it, I would never, it would have taken me a lot longer to solve that problem. Hopefully this gave you a better idea of which slicer may be the most appealing to you. You are going to spend a ton of time in your slicer if you are getting into 3D printing or if you are 3D printing. So it's very important to find one that works for you and contains the majority of the settings that you need for your specific workflow. Let me know in the comments down below what your daily slicer is or your daily driver, as well as your favorite feature. There are so many cool hidden gems in the different slicers that I would love to know what your sort of favorite feature is from that slicer. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing patrons Patreon supporters, I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from Monbot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.